Hey guys, so we are closing in on the release of Destiny 2's first expansion, The Curse of Osiris. Bungie have been doing a number of live streams telling us more about what's new and some of the changes they will be implementing during the release of their first expansion. Apologies, I have not uploaded in some time as I've been thinking about what I want to do and cover on this channel. So taking some time to have a good hard think and would like to do more news slash updates on what's happening in the world of Destiny think doing these more news round bulletins updates sort of things would be better suited for my channel I uh, have more time for it so let's get stuck into it as I missed the first live stream here is everything we found out in the second live stream from Bungie so let's start off with the new public event Vex Crossroads uh, which Bungie has stated that it is the largest public event they have ever done to date so let's get into the crossroads let's find out a little bit more about it what you will need to do in normal and heroic events. The crossroads are broken down into three phases. To activate the crossroad, which is gonna be phase one, you will need to take out all of the Vex coming out of the portals. Once you hit 100%, you will draw out the Vex Gatekeeper, which is a yellow bar enemy. It will drop the orbs once he's been taken out. Pick up the orbs, slam dunk, apologies, not my, my reference for that, that was definitely from the live stream. Okay, so we're going to slam dunk the orbs into pads to deactivate the ganks. Once this side has been done, you will need to repeat the same on the other side of the map. So it's time to jump over by using the Vex jump pads, as I'm calling it. Might be wrong. So once you have slammed, we're going to basically repeat what we've just done on the first side that we've done. Take out the yellow bar, grab his orb, slam dunk it onto the pad, and once you've done it on the second side, that should wipe out all four ganks. So all four gates will be deactivated and will start phase two. Phase two, you will use the Vex jump pads to jump over to the island where you will face more Vex and yet again, another yellow bar enemy Vex. Once the yellow bar is down, he will drop more orbs, which you will need to then slam that orb into another pad, which will be located in the center of the island. Once the orb has been slammed, if there are any Vex left over, they will be wiped. There will be no more Vex. What you will need to do then, once you've cleared the first First island, you'll need to get back on the jump pad and then jump over to the other side where you'll land on another island. You're going to basically repeat the same process. So there's a little bit of a pattern here. You do it one side, jump over to the next, and you just basically rinse and repeat. So once you've done the once you've done the islands, you'll basically finished and completed phase two. Then you'll move over to phase three, which is going to be the big boss. So at this point in time, Bungie don't want us knowing how to activate the heroic part of the public event until it's released on December 5th, which is only a couple of weeks away now. So once you enter phase three, you're gonna go up against the big boss. So on the normal phase without activating the heroic event, you're basically gonna land in the middle and you're gonna take out the big daddy boss. Once he's dead, that's it, end of the end of the public event. You'll then drop your loot crates. So yet again, going back in now, you've activated the heroic event, you're now gonna take on the big daddy boss. But this time, the difference difference is boss in the heroic phase has a small difference as the boss will be immune at time to time you will need to find take out the gatekeeper who will yet again drop more orbs which you will then need to slam on a pad above the boss's head so to get onto the pad you'll need to run out of the shielded area you need to then jump on the vex jumper which will then land you on top of the pad above the big boss once this has happened you'll need to slam that orb down which then allows you and your fire team to take out the big boss for good so like the first one once the boss is dead you loot crate are going to drop and yes again we'll now go into why i said crates even though they're chests and i just i just prefer loot crates it sounds better so as you can see in the footage we can see that there's two crates i'm not sure if this will be applied for all of the current public events that we currently have in game but hopefully we'll find out when season two starts when that starts the same day as curse of osiris so basically this completes the breakdown of the new public event. Pretty simple, pretty crazy. It takes you all over Mercury from one end to the other by using the gate. So you're not in a static location like you are with the current ones within Destiny 2, which is a nice little touch, I personally believe. So that covers the public events. Bungie then went on to discuss some changes that have been made to Adventures. They have added slash changed some, some into Heroic with different modifiers. This then leads us into how the Forge in the Lighthouse will work. So just remember, they're going to basically make modifiers and Heroic Adventures. So we'll come back into that one in a second. It is very apparent. We'll get through that in a minute. 
as we've seen in the first live stream, Bungie showed us that we will be able to forge new Vex style weapons at the lighthouse. And in the second live stream, they showed us how the forge will work and actually showed us an actual weapon forged through the forge. So when it comes around to unlocking a new weapon, you will need to visit Brother Vance in the lighthouse to get a Lost Prophecy, which is a bit like blueprints to unlock one of 11 new legendary weapons. We have been informed that all the weapons that we will get from the forge are based around weapons that would have been around when Osiris was still part of the vanguard at the tower before he was exiled by the speaker. Uh, I'm not a law nerd so if you want to learn a little bit about law I would definitely say go look at My Name is Bife. That's fantastic work with law stuff. Um, so yeah I'd definitely look into that if you're interested in law. So to unlock a lost prophecy you will be able to acquired the Lost Prophecy from Brother Vance. To unlock the Lost Prophecy, you will be able to go into your inventory to have a look at the Lost Prophecy's details to see what materials you require to forge the weapon. In the Details tab, it will tell you which activities you will need to complete to get the materials required. This is where the new heroic adventures that we just talked about earlier on comes into play, as this will be one of the ways to get what you require, as well as doing public events, getting the materials from the loot crates, completing strikes, and completing crucible matches. Once we've completed what is required and have all the materials you need, head back to the Lighthouse of Mirth and use the forge to unlock the weapon. You will be able to see how many weapons you have already unlocked as well as the weapons you still have to unlock by looking at the wall at the Lighthouse which they showed off in the first stream and also have showed off in this stream to demonstrate how to unlock it. So you will know how many more weapon systems you have to unlock. And remember, there's one out of 11 that you can get. They're all going to be legendary as far as we're aware. One of the last bits of information from the stream we got was regarding strikes. Strikes will be back in the main story of the campaign, but not like they were in Destiny 1. Bungie has stated that there will be two new strikes within the campaign of Curse of Osiris which you will be able to complete as a solo player as well as in your fire team. So they've changed it up a little bit so it is you're able to complete it as a solo whilst you're in the campaign. But once you've completed the campaign, then two strikes will be added into the strike playlists. The strikes will be different, so that will be kind of interesting. Bungie also did show off a bit more of the infinite forest and stated that it will always be ever-changing and not just the landscape that will be changing, but also the enemies. So the enemies will always be different within the infinite forests. But what you've got to remember is the infinite forest is a Vex simulation. So it's not the real world that you would get maybe like on Earth or Titan. So everything that's inside the infinite forest is a simulation made by the Vex. So you will have all four enemy races. So there will be the Vex, obviously, the Hive, the Fallen, and the Kaboom. So funny that they've said four races will be within the infinite forest. So that will mean there's still no sign of the Seaver within Destiny 2. Are we ever going to get a point where Seaver will become part of Destiny 2 or are they completely ignoring Rise of Iron from the campaign? Well, that's yet to be seen. That's for another time. Let's not get into that now. So that was the second stream in basically a nutshell. So the third and final live stream will be on the 28th of December, the week before Curse of Osiris launches on December 5th. If you're in the UK, obviously GMT time, this will be around 7 o'clock for the live event. It will be the last one. And Bungie did state within the live stream that next week they will be covering new weapons, new armor for the campaign, season 2, raid, iron banner, faction rally, and all new exotics as well. So that's going to be an interesting stream. Hopefully we'll get a, a good look of what new exotics are coming in, which ones they're going to be bringing back from Destiny 1 into Destiny 2. I can't wait. It's going to be exciting. We're not long off now of Curse of Osiris. It's a little bit stagnant now. Um, so now that we're gonna we're on the on the road for it, hopefully we can deliver. There's been some nice stuff being said about it, and hopefully it brings back some of the player base. But anyway, guys, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a comment down below. But until next time, guys, I have been Blaze Through Gaming. Until next time, goodbye.